Dear students, today we will learn about different types of thermodynamic processes. So first let's see what is a thermodynamic process. We know that thermodynamic properties like pressure, volume, temperature etc. define a thermodynamic system. So whenever there is a change in any of these thermodynamic properties, we say that the system has undergone a change of state. This is called a process. So when a thermodynamic system changes from one state to another, then the operation is called a process. And these processes involve the change of conditions like temperature, pressure, volume, etc. Now let's see what are the different types of thermodynamic processes. First we will see about isothermal process. As the name implies, isothermal means the temperature will remain constant. So a process in which the temperature of the system remains constant throughout is called an isothermal process. Delta T will be equal to zero. Delta T means change in temperature. In an isothermal process, though the temperature is constant, heat can flow from the system to the surroundings and vice versa. That is, there will be heat exchange between the system and the surroundings though the temperature is a constant. An isothermal condition can be accomplished by keeping the system in thermal contact with the constant temperature bath. For example, when water is heated at its boiling point, even when heat flows to water, the temperature will not increase until the water completely evaporates. Similarly, at the freezing point, when the ice melts to water, the temperature of ice will not increase even when heat is supplied to ice. Another example that we can see in everyday life is that all biological processes occur at constant body temperature of 37 degree Celsius. So this is another example for an isothermal process. So a process in which the temperature of the system remains constant is called an isothermal process. Although the temperature is constant, heat can be exchanged between the system and the surroundings. Now next is adiabatic process. A process in which no heat enters or leaves the system is called adiabatic process. That is Q equals zero. In an adiabatic process, the gas can expand by spending its internal energy or it can be compressed through some external work. That means the pressure, volume or temperature of the system may change in an adiabatic process. Now let's see how we can achieve an adiabatic process. We can achieve an adiabatic process by two conditions. The first way is by thermally insulating the system from the surroundings so that no heat flows into or out of the system. For example, when we keep a gas in a cylinder and that is thermally insulated from the surroundings, then when the gas is compressed, that will be adiabatic compression. When it is expanded, then that will be adiabatic expansion. Because since the cylinder is insulated from the surroundings, there will not be any heat exchange between the system and the surroundings. Such types of processes are called adiabatic processes. The second condition by which we can achieve an adiabatic process is that if the process is occurring so quickly, so that there is no time to exchange heat with the surroundings, even though there is no thermal insulation. The first way was by keeping the system thermally insulated from the surroundings. The second way is by a 
fast process if the process occurs so quickly so that there is no time to exchange heat with the surroundings even though there is no thermal insulation lot of examples we can see in daily life for adiabatic process the first one is when the tire of a vehicle burst the air expands so quickly that there is no time to exchange heat with the surroundings and that will be an adiabatic process another one is that when the warm air rises from the surface of the earth it adiabatically expands as a result the water vapor cools and condenses into water droplets forming rainy clouds next type of process is isochoric process a process in which the volume of the system is kept constant is called an isochoric process delta v equals 0 that is change in volume as 0 although the volume is constant other variables like pressure temperature internal energy etc will change in an isochoric process now let's see how we can achieve an isochoric process if a reaction is occurring in a sealed container of constant volume then that will be an isochoric process so in this image you can see that the gas is enclosed in a cylinder and the volume is kept constant but when heat is supplied the temperature increases the pressure also increases you can see the change in pressure from p1 to p2 but the volume is a constant and this is an example for an isochoric process another simple example is when we boil water or cook food in a vessel closed with a lid since the vessel is closed with a lid the volume will remain constant but since heat is supplied the temperature or pressure may increase so such type of process that is the volume of the system will remain constant is called an isochoric process now next is isobaric process a process in which the pressure of the system is kept constant is called an isobaric process delta p equals 0 that is the change in pressure is zero in this image you can see that some weight or mass is kept on the top in order to maintain constant pressure in the cylinder so when the gas is heated and pushes the piston so that it exerts a force equivalent to atmospheric pressure plus the force due to gravity okay. and this process is called isobaric since we have kept the masses or weight on the top the pressure will remain constant but as the piston is moved in or out the volume will change another example that we can see in daily life is we are boiling water or cooking food in an open vessel then the pressure above the food will always be at atmospheric pressure which is a constant so such processes that is the pressure of the system is kept constant is called an isobaric process next is cyclic process as the term implies a process in which the system returns to its initial state after undergoing a series of different processes is called a cyclic process the thermodynamic properties of a system return to their original values in a cyclic process the processes occurring inside heat engines and refrigerators are all cyclic processes we will discuss more about cyclic processes when we learn about second law of thermodynamics okay now the last one is endothermic and exothermic processes in endothermic process the energy is absorbed as heat for example in melting of ice or in vaporization of water heat energy is absorbed from the surroundings and such type of process is known as endothermic process whereas in exothermic process the energy is liberated as heat for example in combustion of gasoline an enormous amount of heat energy is liberated 
So the process in which energy is liberated as heat or heat energy is liberated is called exothermic processes. So in this class, we have seen different types of thermodynamic processes including isothermal, adiabatic, isochoric, isobaric and also about cyclic process and endothermic and exothermic processes. In the next class, we will learn about reversible and irreversible processes.